Hey guys, it's your girl Sage. I hope you're having a wonderful day or night whenever this video finds you. I'm here with our daily bread, and for today we have 2 Chronicles chapter 2. Solomon prepares to build the temple. Then Solomon determined to build a temple for the name of the Lord and a royal house for himself. Solomon selected 70,000 men to bear burdens, 80,000 to quarry stone in the mountains, and 3,600 to oversee them. Then Solomon sent to Hiram, king of Tyre, saying, As you have dealt with David my father and sent him cedars to build himself a house to dwell in, so deal with me. Behold, I am building a temple for the name of the Lord my God, to dedicate it to him, to burn before him sweet incense for the continual showbread, for the burnt offerings morning and evening, on the Sabbaths, on the new moon, and on the set feasts of the Lord our God. This is an ordinance forever to Israel. And the temple which I build will be great, for our God is greater than all gods. But who is able to build him a temple, since heaven and the heaven of heavens cannot contain him? Who am I then that I should build him a temple except to burn sacrifice before him? Therefore send me at once a man skillful to work in gold and silver, in bronze and iron, in purple and crimson and blue, who has skill to engrave with the skillful men who are with me in Judah and Jerusalem, whom, my, Dave, whom David my father provided. Also send me cedar and cypress and algum logs from Lebanon, for I know that your servants have skill to cut timber in Lebanon, and indeed my servants will be with your servants, to prepare timber for me in abundance, for the temple which I am about to build shall be great and wonderful. And indeed, I will give to you your servants, the woodsmen who cut timber, 20,000 cores of ground wheat, 20,000 cores of barley, 20,000 baths of wine, and 20,000 baths of oil. Then Hiram, king of Tyre, answered in writing, which he sent to Solomon. Because the Lord loves his people, he has made you king over them. Hiram also said, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, who made heaven and earth, for he has given King David a wise son, endowed with prudence and understanding, who will build a temple for the Lord and a royal house for himself. And now I have sent a skillful man, endowed with understanding, Huram, my master craftsman, the son of a woman of the daughters of Dan, and his father was a man of Tyre. Skilled to work in gold and silver, bronze and iron, stone and wood, purple and blue, fine linen and crimson, and to make any engraving to accomplish any plan which may be given to him, with your skillful men and with the skillful men of my lord David your father. Now therefore the wheat, the barley, the oil, and the wine which my lord has spoken of, let him send to his servants." And we will cut wood from Lebanon. As much as you need, we will bring it to you in rafts by sea to Joppa, and you will carry it up to Jerusalem. Then Solomon numbered all the aliens who were in the land of Israel, after the census in which David his father had numbered them, and there were found to be 153,600. And he made 70,000 of them bearers of burdens, 80,000 stone cutters in the mountain, and 3,600 overseers to make the people work. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about this chapter. Um, okay, so after Solomon had sought the Lord out for wisdom and said, Lord, I just want wisdom and understanding to lead your people, the Lord said, that's great. I see that you are a man that wants to do a good job in the role I called you to. But now let's go ahead and prepare you to be that man. I'm going to send you the most wealth and riches and everything that you need to take care of my people. You did not ask for wealth or riches, but you are someone that I see. I see your heart and I see that you will be a great king for my people. So I'm going to bless you with wealth and riches that no king before you has ever seen and no king after you will ever see. So nonetheless, then, of course, um, Solomon begins investing into the city itself. He's investing in getting horses, chariots, um, and in fact, silver and, God is, or, I'm sorry, silver and gold is so common in Jerusalem that it's as common as stones that we find outside. Um, 
So nonetheless, now Solomon is preparing to build the temple of the Lord. And, you know, I really like this uh, communication that he has between uh, himself and Hiram because it actually reminds me a lot of um, networking or perhaps when we are friends with friends of our own parents, for example. It kind of gives me that impression as I'm reading because also um solomon he's he's getting ready but he's like you know i have the the men that are willing to work and prepare the materials but i need someone special that's going to build this temple because he even actually says right here in um second chronicles um chapter two verse well i'm gonna just read four five and six behold i am building a temple for the name of the lord my god to dedicate it to him to burn before him sweet incense for the continual showbread, for the burnt offerings morning and evening, on the Sabbaths, on the new moons, and on the set feasts of our Lord of the Lord our God. This is an ordinance forever to Israel. And the temple which I build will be great, for our God is greater than all the gods. But who is able to build him a temple since heaven and the heaven of heavens cannot contain him? Who am I then that I should build him a temple except to burn sacrifice before him? So right here, Solomon, we see he's explaining the purpose in which why he wants to build the temple, but also because of all these offerings that he wants to do, he wants to do it in a way that is lavishing to the Lord, that is very extravagant because remember the Lord God Almighty, he is perfect and righteous in every which way imaginable to the point where even when uh, the tabernacle existed way back before in um, the book of Numbers, I would say, way back then, that that the Lord God was so holy that nobody could even be in the same room with him except certain people. So Solomon's right to kind of be a little bit nervous about I'm preparing a temple for the Lord, but the Lord already created all things. Who am I to create anything for our Lord? You know, he, he created all things. He's greater than all the gods. You know, who am I to do this? But nonetheless, I will try my best because he called me to do it. And that's why Solomon, he is pulling all the stops for this. He is, he's already having all these people um, preparing materials and whatnot, right, um, from the census that his father before him had, had made. But he also is reaching out to somebody who he's seen his work beforehand, um, probably when he was younger and King David was still alive. But he, he's seen also the relationship that King David has had with uh, King Haram as well. So he said, okay, I know I can trust this person to send me somebody who would be good at, um, at building the temple because I only want the cream de la crop. I want the best of the best for this temple because this is for my Lord God. And so Solomon, he is throwing his all into this. First, he already fortified the city by getting the chariots, the horsemen, you know, and taking care of the, of the city, um, where they are so provided for that silver and gold are as common as stones. He already did that, but now his money is going towards the Lord. His money is going towards taking care of officially just having a, a temple of the Lord. And, and I just want to quickly mention something. Solomon buying the horses, the chariots, and providing for his people is exactly what the Lord wanted him to do so that his people would be safe, so that his people would be taken care of. Yes, the Lord is mightier than horses and chariots we know to trust in him over horses and chariots but nonetheless what solomon was doing was he was building up his military and economic power so his people would be safe in this fortified city um so now now comes the time for sporging and before even building his own house he is dedicated and building a house for the lord first so i i just wanted to explain that because you know um we know that when we are in the body of Christ, that the first, the, the last will be made first and the first will be made last. Solomon provided for everybody else before he provided for himself. And that's exactly what we need to remember as well, that we need to take care of others before we take care of our own needs. And that includes taking care of our bills. That includes tithing. That includes just taking care of things that need to be done before we go and sporging on ourselves. Um, and I say that entirely with love because I myself struggle with that. 
Um, so it was a really good read for this chapter this morning. But nonetheless, his intentions are pure that he wants to build this temple and to build the Lord an honorable place that sacrifices and burning incense could be done at. A place in which would be such a glorious sight to see that people would travel all the way to Jerusalem to see it. You know, people would travel all, all the way to Jerusalem just to be in the presence of the Lord. Um, and, and we also know also, um, way back when, when the tabernacle was being built, that the Lord is very particular in the way that things are built. Um, and he has his reasons for it too. But also, we know that he deserves the best because he could technically, if he really wanted to, just like make something just come out of the ground and it'd be perfect for him. But he wants us to do it because that's us giving back ourselves to him. It's the same way that when um, parents, they have kids. And now I know a lot of parents watching may have gone through the whole their kid bringing them home some like messed up macaroni art <laughs> and uh and they're like oh this is great and then you know as soon as the kid leaves they're like i don't know what this is you know i i'm sure there's parents that have gone through that but also there's something about um and i'm going to speak to a particular set of people here parents of creative children who have who have um maybe given them a portrait or they've watched and seen how they've grown over time and that's kind of what i'm getting from this as well that that you know the lord he can easily just create himself something he can easily just do that he already created the heavens the earth he doesn't need us humans but us building this temple for him is us giving back a part of ourselves to him it's, it's giving back. It's, um, this is the most extreme form of tithing that there is because also we see how much that he's paying for this. First off, we already see that he's cutting down all of these, all of these, uh, cedars, quarrying stone, you know, and, um, so it's a lot of labor that's occurring here. But also right here in Second Chronicles, uh, chapter two, verse 10, this is where he talks about the payment that he's going to make to Hiram. And indeed, I will give to you, your servants, the woodsmen who cut timber, 20,000 cores of ground wheat, 20,000 cores of barley, 20,000 baths of wine, and 20,000 baths of oil. And um, I'm not going to lie to you guys. The conversion rate on that one is um, a little bit lost on me. So I do apologize. But if you do know, feel free to leave it in the comments. But it sounds like he's willing to pay him quite handsomely. It seems like he's willing to pay King Haram more than more than what's being given here. And that's completely fine. He just wants one man who's skillful to work in these things. And he wants his servants to cut some timber from materials because he knows that they have a lot more resource over there. You know, but even then, he's willing to pay a lot for this because it's that important to him. But nonetheless, nonetheless, um, Hiram, you know, responds and he says, hey, first off, I just want to say that, you know, because God loves his people, he made you the king of his people. And then he goes on and, and he's saying that as a compliment to Solomon. But then also, I'm sure that King Haram saw Solomon as a tyke or as a kid when uh, King David was still around. And probably went, oh, wow, this is actually a pretty good kid. He's got a good head on his shoulders. And now that he's king, almost kind of giving him a congratulations. But nonetheless, nonetheless, Haram's on board. He wants to help. He he talks about his um, master craftsman, Huram, not Hiram, Huram, um, that fits all of his needs. And of course, is like, yeah, let's go ahead and make the trade. You know, I, I trust you. So um, let's go ahead and get this project going. And that's really what this chapter is about. Um, it's again, it's a friendly exchange between the two kings, but also just how important it is that King Solomon gets the cream de la crop, the best of the best to help him with this project that he's building, this temple for the Lord, because again, he already he's already taken care of the Lord's people and that's what the Lord wants first and foremost. The Lord wants for us to take care of the people in need, take care of others because also, Sometimes when we help people, we don't know when we're possibly helping someone, an angel in disguise, but also when we help the least of them, we, we don't realize that we're helping, we're helping probably one of the greatest that's going to be sitting in heaven. 
you know, um, and when I say that, I, I'm really thinking about uh, Lazarus, the the beggar that was sitting outside the rich man's house, you know, and he was a beggar, he was getting licked by dogs, and then when he died and went to heaven, that he was in uh, Abraham's bosom. And, you know, so again, it's even when we help the least of our people, that's what the Lord wants from us. But then also to dedicate ourselves to the Lord as well. And also we know now in the New Testament that our bodies are that temple. So we need to be taking care of ourselves to the best of our ability. And I'm talking about eating healthy. I'm talking about getting a healthy amount of exercise, sunlight, you know, making sure that we're not, you know, indulging in drugs or alcohol, things that inebriate us. And um, also, alcohol is technically poison. That's another one, too. Um, I, I personally don't like alcohol because I can taste that it tastes like poison. My body knows this as I'm drinking it, so I can't even enjoy it. Um, I'm pretty certain that's a blessing from the Lord. But nonetheless, making sure that we're taking care of ourselves and also making sure that we are adorning ourselves modestly as well you know just because we've been blessed with the bodies that we've been given that doesn't necessarily mean that we have we i mean it would be almost disrespectful to go around and flaunting everything that we have um for in the name of lust instead of in the name of the lord so modesty is also key but what's more important than that too is having that humble and gentle quiet spirit before the lord as well and that's what we see with Solomon right here. He is humble. He is he is very humble in his uh, approach for building this temple and also with his relationship with the Lord as well. Who am I to build this amazing temple for the the God greater than all the other gods that that created the heavens and the earth? Who am I to build this temple? Nonetheless, the Lord has called me to do it. I'm just going to do my best. And that's exactly what we see how uh, Solomon is doing here. But in any case, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this word up here. I am praying that this message blessed someone. And if it did, feel free to like, subscribe. And until next time, I hope all of y'all take care. Bye-bye.